We're at Pierce Stadium where it came from, I suppose, a really poor first half into a thrilling draw that nobody's really happy with. I know nobody's happy with the draw, but in particular this afternoon, no manager was really happy with the draw. Yeah, both managers seem to be uh, pretty down afterwards. Um, I felt Wexford were better for longer periods of the game when they hit the breeze than Galway were in the first half. That Galway started very well and that buffer kind of kept them in it for long periods. Wexford shot, uh, it was 10 wides in the first half. But Galway's forward line didn't motor at all. Conor Whelan was good in the first half, and outside of that, that was it. The free taking on both sides was very, very average. Niall Burke gets substituted, and without Joe Canning up front, Galway were leaderless and rudderless. Um, and that's a huge worry. Wexford obviously had a major opportunity at the end of the game, both with the goal that should have been buried, and also Lee Chin's effort that it should have been a score. He was all on his own 60 yards out. He's not trying to put it wide, but they'll reflect back on that and they'll look at their opportunities. In Davies' interview afterwards, he made the point that Wexford were the better side. I hear some people contend that that wasn't the case. I would actually agree with him. Again, on the basis that for longer periods, when they were dominant, it was for longer periods than Galway were. And they were picking their points in a 10, 12, 15 minute period in the second half, easier than Galway were doing it. And they had a better array of scores, more than Galway had. Galway did have an opportunity towards the end. I actually thought that the, the point that Galway got to put them, put them a point head was actually wide from where I was. So I think on reflection, I and mean, when Galway reviewed a video of this game, I think they'll come away feeling they actually were lucky to get away with a draw today. Now, having said that, Wexford, after two games, haven't lost a game. And you can take an awful lot of positives from that. Maybe most people expected them to beat Dublin and maybe not win today. But I think he'd rather draw with Dublin and draw here today both away games so it now means that Dublin and Galway Galway Kilkenny and Wexford Kilkenny all of a sudden are massive games and it's thrown Leinster wide open so from a results point of view Leinster Championship yeah it's really really good but let's face it it was a poor game for long periods conditions didn't lend itself to it but it was a poor very poor game for long periods and the welter of excitement at the end shouldn't mask that Davy says he's very, very proud of his players. And he's right to be very proud because they stuck in. But let's be fair, the standard of hurling wasn't good today. I'd have a, what I'd call a cordial relationship with both managers. And I could tell after the interviews, they were both highly wound up for different reasons. And I think perhaps rightfully so for a lot of it. Um, but it just goes to show that we talk about the Munster Championship and say how amazing it is as a spectator. Probably not that amazing with the stress when you're playing in it. But it goes to show that this new format really puts managers under pressure, I think. Yeah, it does. And Davy's easily wound up and he's, he's, he's that type of exuberant type of manager. And we know that. He was the same as a player. And it, some people like it. It makes for good copy. Um, and he was agitated afterwards. He was sent off. Rightfully, in my view, he encroached onto the pitch and he just a barrage of abuse at the, uh, at the fourth official. Well, because he did feel that they missed something really, really big. I mean, his player was on the ground, looked like to be in a lot of pain. He, was taken, he looked to be taken out off the ball. So you can understand why Davy was as upset as he was and as angry. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when you're as passionate as he is, you know, he sees what he sees. And he'll raise issues and he'll shout every time he sees something he thinks should go their way. Even when there's nothing in things, he roars and he shouts. But I often think at a time the theatrics are a little bit too much on the sideline. Now, it didn't affect the way his team played. And I remember speaking to Brian Gavin about this before when he refereed to Clare replayed all Ireland with, 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 when the players were back chatting him in that game and on a couple of occasions he actually awarded the freeze up to Cork 10 or 14 yards and he said on one, to one or two clear players stop carrying on like your manager I'm going to keep penalising you the difficulty is if the indiscipline then seeps into the players so you've got to be mindful as a manager yes we can all get emotional looking at the teams we like and the teams that we manage etc but I felt afterwards he was very derogatory to you I have to say I heard the interview and I didn't think he carried himself with great dignity I think he asked a really smart intelligent question that was an obvious question so from that perspective I think he should have answered it but I mean you've got to check the emotions as well because when it happens with regularity you know at what stage do Wexford County Board say tone it down here you're doing a good job with our team but just tone it down we we don't need it and there was incursions from his Mayor Fearness as well. I watched that along the line quite a bit today, and they were all very agitated. You know, you don't have to copy your manager, lads. Be your own men. But uh, but I mean, Wexford did play very well uh, in the second half. In the first half, they were atrocious, and in the second half, and from periods of the first half, Galway were atrocious. But they both lived to fight another day, and to get to a Leinster final at this stage will be critical to them. Neither neither of them will not want to get to a Leinster final. Galway's bench is not strong enough currently at the moment. By God, did it need Joe Canning back, because without him, rudderless is not the answer. They were so average. 
I think just to be fair to Davey and put this to bed, um, I'd know him quite well. I understand why he was so agitated afterwards. I'm sure he definitely didn't mean to be derogatory to me. I just think, like you said, the passion spills over. I don't think it's an act, and I do sometimes think that every time he does kind of spill over a bit, the Wexford lads respond really positively. We saw it like two years ago up against Tipperary, as I would, I think, with Jason Ford, remember he encroached and really kind of geed up his own team. So I think maybe he knows what he's doing when he does it. I'm putting words in his mouth now, Macy, but I want to put this to bed now because yeah. it's just, that is what it is. It's happened, it's done. But going forward now, these teams, what do they have to do? Because I'm thinking of Kilkenny, and Dublin, who could, if based, looking at those uh, Galway Wexford today, both Kilkenny and Dublin could have beaten them. There's no doubt about it. It's thrown Leinster wide open. It's made it into a good championship. Dublin are still with a, with a chance. I mean, Kilkenny, Kilkenny are going well. I think they're in a good place at the moment. They've, they've had some critical injuries. They've had their break this weekend as well. So that's going to aid them. We have ferocious challenges ahead. To get to a Leinster final and go that route, to the latter stages is the way forward because if you get to a Leinster final it means you're winning games if you're winning games the morale in the camp is good so every game from here on in with the participants are key games they're absolutely critical a win lifts a team a loss deflates a team and you start to question your team when you lose you start to question is the depth and strength there why aren't we performing to the levels that we are so you're absolutely correct to raise that point the the pressure stakes are there with the managers and Everybody's looking at them. Everybody has access to them through media, etc. And you see the emotions that come out so quickly. Leinster is wide open. You lose a game now. You've got to look at yourself. You've got to look at where are we going? What do we need to do to redress it? So every new game takes on a life of its own. And we're at a critical juncture where every game is must win at this stage. Must win for the simple reason for us to get to where we need to get to. We've got to go on winning runs. Form in the in the in the in the format that we have form can't be temporary form has got to be permanent tipper shown it at the moment they're the team that are shown the form there's nobody else showing that form at the moment cork poor the first game really good the second game limerick very poor last weekend form limerick need form coming into the next game so it's wide open it's intriguing it's a wonderful format it's worked it continues to work and it throws up great imbalances at times certainties that you think are certainties and then somebody falls down when you don't expect them to fall down it's a really good championship